This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering. Hello everybody, thanks for watching Project Volunteer. I'm your host Randy Lanham. And I'm Teresa Rowe. Teresa, we're here at the Western Kentucky Botanical Gardens today. I'm excited because we're outside and it makes me feel so good. But I know. But there's some bugs in the air. That's okay, nature. We're gonna be a part of nature today. I can't imagine you being a part of nature. Hey, I grew up on a farm. I got a little experience doing some gardening. So. I live on a farm. And you still don't garden. So. <laughs> <laughs> I Perfect don't. combination. I don't, but it's okay. It is. We all have our talents and gifts. That's right. And today we are literally going to get our hands dirty. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, sir. We're going to get them down in the dirt. I didn't bring my gloves. We'll find you some gloves right. for your pretty little fingers. Awesome. All right. Thank you all for watching. Have you ever wondered what nonprofit organizations do or about all their different volunteering opportunities? Or what about hearing testimonies from the recipients of their care? Join us on our journey as we walk in the shoes of a volunteer for a day and find out about some amazing organizations that are literally changing the world. And along the way, meet some true surprising heroes making a difference in the lives of others as we feature another Project Volunteer. Bill and Susie, you donated eight and a half acres so that you could start the garden. Tell me why you did that. Well, we were very excited about building an opportunity in Orangeboro for people to come and enjoy nature and to have a place to rest and relax and learn about nature and about the environment. And we also had lived at a bed and breakfast for 10 years. We had a lot of visitors come who were thinking about moving to Orangeboro and they were always interested in quality of life issues in the town. We thought having a bed, having a botanical garden was uh, a real opportunity for the community to have quality of life issue to attract people to come to town and to stay. Absolutely. Were you both into gardening? Only I mean, Bill. in order to do this? Only Bill. <laughs> okay, Bill was in. And so, Susie, you have a love for gardening now as well. I have a love for the garden <laughs> and, and, he, and hopefully keeping it A1 maintenance. Absolutely. Now, how many acres um, does the garden have currently? There are 12 acres now. All right. I want to know how you started this. This was a big undertaking. It has grown up so much. Uh, so where did you even begin and start? Well, it started as a project of the master gardeners here in Orangeboro. They were interested in having a botanical garden and they came to us and we got involved and as you mentioned, donated the property and, and got it started. So it's been mainly a volunteer program. Uh, initially with all volunteers. We like to say that we started with no money, <laughs> but a lot of volunteers and they did a lot of work and sure enough, people started getting involved and came and enjoyed and supported us and has grown to a really wonderful botanical. And we so, have volunteers on all levels, care of the garden, but above and beyond that too, chefs of the garden, oh, wow. in the office, that sort of thing. So you have children that come out here and volunteer as well, and you have educational programs for them? We, of course, we think education is so important and it's always been a big part of, of the garden. And as it, again mentioned, that. Uh, were interested in they, that they would learn about the environment and mm -hmm. how to protect it. I want to ask if you have an inspirational story that you would like to share with us today. One that we especially, Bill will probably have another one also, but one that I often think of is um, an incoming college freshman who came out here to volunteer with a, with a special program from Brescia University. Uh, did not have anything or much to say during a four-hour-plus work session, but when they returned to Brescia and Dr. Linda Gerard asked for their feedback about the morning, he said that it gave him hope that he was going to be able to tolerate and live through being 150 miles away from his family, oh. that he had found a place of beauty and a place that even hard work was fun. Wow.
And that's got to touch your heart to know that this garden is touching the hearts of so many people. Bill, do you want to share a story? Well, I think the inspiration is the beauty of nature and just being able to be out and look and see what has been created and to enjoy it in a peaceful manner. A lot of special memories have been shared here. I know even my daughter um, was proposed here um, in your gazebo. So, so many special events, so many special memories. Weddings are going on out here. I just want to thank you for starting this. And this will live on and on and on for generations to come. Thank you both. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for being here. We thank all the volunteers that, that have made it possible. Barbara, Eva, thank you so much for allowing me to hang out with you today. And you are going to train me to do some work here at the Bo Botanical Gardens, right? Right, right. So what is it, where are we in the Botanical Gardens? This is the herb garden, mm -hmm. and we're standing in the culinary section. Okay. The part that we put in our food to make it taste better. Okay. Yeah, and it, every time you come in here, all you have to do is this, smell your hand okay. or your fingers. Oh, I can smell it. Yes. Now oh, this is that smells good. winter savory. It's also called the bean herb because mm. you can put it in your dried beans okay. to make them taste better. Uh, you are a master gardener? Yes. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, I'm a master gardener since 1993. Now what does it take to be a master gardener? Well, you, it's an extension program with the University of Kentucky and you take a class, and, which is offered every other year. Then you take a test, and then you have to give back, the first year you have to give back 40 hours of community service. Okay. And I get that a lot. I bet you do. <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun working at the garden. So what are we gonna be doing? Well, Eva's going to pull some weeds in the cilantro. Well, let, let, let's start with that. Now, I've, I've yeah. not done that. Now, I grew up on a farm, and I pulled a lot of weeds. <laughs> but not been cilantro. But Eva, why don't you show me what we're going to be doing here? Let's pull some weeds. Well, this is cilantro. Okay. And so, and these are weeds. Gotcha. So, Randy, just take your fingers and, they, and smell they're... the cilantro. Okay. You said, yeah, I can smell that. Okay, so I want to leave those alone, and right. we're looking for the weeds. So we're just going to make a little pile of them down here. We'll. We'll pick them up later. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I see some weeds over here. Now, why is it that you volunteer? What, what makes you come out here and want to volunteer? Well, I just love being in the garden and working in the dirt. And <laughs> now, I like you. I grew up on a farm, and I just I love being out here. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so glad you're here today. Eva is a new master gardener. She took the class last year. So she's trying to get her hours to be able to get her certificate. Wow, that's something else. Well, I appreciate you all teaching me this. So let's pull a few more weeds here. What would you say to encourage other people maybe to come out and volunteer? Um, well, I would say if you want peace and quiet and Lots of beautiful flowers and birds and butterflies to be around. This is the place to be. So nature lovers are going to yes. love it here, yes, right? Definitely. Absolutely. All right. So doing some weeding here, getting some out, and I'll leave that with you for a minute. Now, what else we got going on over here? Well, um, this, I'm grab mine. this is winter savory. Okay. And this is uh, needs to be trimmed. The the dead part. Okay. So we just trim it down as far as we can. Okay. And I gotta figure out how to unlock these. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> Accidentally. <laughs> Didn't do that on purpose. All right, let me get out here. Just just cut it off. Alright, so find some of these dead parts yes, and go all the way to the bottom here. Yes, yes. Cut that off. Now some of the dead parts might look at this one. It's just dead this far. So you just go back to the green. Oh. <laughs> well, you're fine. You're fine. If you make a mistake, it will come back. Okay. 
I got so if it's got green on it, leave it alone, right? Well, so, don't cut off too much green. Gotcha. I understand. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Okay, that's a good dead part right there. Let me get down here. What would you tell a potential sponsor? Somebody's watching this show and thinking, well, you know, I don't know. Do I want to go to a botanical gardens or any nature center and, and volunteer? Well, if you'd like, even said, if you like digging in the dirt, if you live in an apartment and you can't get out and, and work with plants, this is the place to come. Yeah. Because we all need to get out and, and do something other than having to stay in the house. Yeah. Even if um, in the wintertime I get so tired of seeing brown or maybe white, I want to see green. Yeah, right. So I want to see something growing. So it's good for you physically, you're getting exercise, right. fresh mentally, air, mentally. Good, good for you mentally, yes. it's good for you all the way around, right? It is. It is. All right, well I appreciate it. the garden. Well thank you all so much for teaching me and training me. Let's get back to work. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this will be great. And here we are in the rose garden and I do not know what to do with the roses as a volunteer but I want to ask how long have you been a volunteer here? Well really I started in 93, 1993 and I didn't, I don't come every week or I might miss a while but I have been coming since 1993 and this has grown so much you cannot believe how big this garden has gotten and if people would come and look at it and enjoy it, you would really know. This house wasn't even here when I came. So you want to learn how to uh, take care of roses, right? Yes, because I've had roses before. I think they were knockout roses. I had no idea what to do oh, with them. Well, now, and they kind of died. Well, now, knockout roses just take care of themselves. But now, <laughs> not in my area. Habra tea roses, <laughs> they like uh, tender love and care. So first of all, yes. you know, do you know how to deadhead a rose? I do not. Okay, you have to do that in order for roses to keep blooming. Okay. So you just, uh, most of the time they recommend that you take your rose and go down to the fifth leaf. And these roses, you can't do that because there's not that many uh, leaves there. So you wanna. Sure. Now be careful because it is sticky. All right, there you go is. down to that leaf. This one right here? Uh -huh. And do it correctly? That's correct. And right. when you know when to deadhead is when the roses get in full bloom. All right. And then they'll get droopy and uh, lose their color. They'll turn brown and they're begging you to do something because it just, I see how this looks this right, one right here. here. Can now, I try that? Now you can do that. All right, so as a volunteer, um, I'm learning how to deadhead. That's right, that's right. And you trust me, right? That's right, cut that off. <laughs> okay. Okay. We throw that in the bucket. And you have to do this uh, every time they lose their uh, their buds and all of that to keep them blooming. Now what is this and for? Now, well dear, that is a rake or a little fork and that helps you to get the weeds up. And weeds grow faster than the roses, would you believe that? Well, weeds, I mean, re yes. weeds grow fast. That's true. So then you just, here is one right over here. Right here? Yeah, right. Just get them down in the roots so they won't come back. Like that? Loosen up the dirt and over All there. Right. And I always pick them up and put them in a thing because it looks bad when you leave them That's right. laying there. Okay. There's a lot to do as a volunteer out here. Like you could be out here like oh. every week volunteering yeah. weeding and deadheading and spraying and oh, yeah. looking out for the bugs. And why do you volunteer? Why do you think it's important to well, volunteer? Well, you know what? It helps other people. Besides, it helps me. Keeps my mind busy and, and especially roses. I love people, but I like roses. They, <laughs> they are they are very very uh, well. It helps your nerves and your mind when you're when you keep busy. Right. 
So I wish more people would uh, take up volunteering, really. Now then, have you learned enough about these roses? You want to get some more of these? I think so. You want me to weed, don't you? Yeah, I want you to get the weeds out of here. I will. Yeah. I'll do the best I can. Like I think I Randy said, needs we, to get any I, I come two days a week. And it seems like lot. seems like the rose, the, the weeds have grown. And of course, we've had a lot of rain. But now see how that goes? It comes up really easy. Mm -hmm, it does. There's not much grass. It's just those old wild weeds that do that. Okay, Ann, well, thank you so much. I, I could probably be weeding here all day. But thank you for showing me what to do. Well, you're welcome. Now, I'm going to have you back over here sometime to help me okay. now that you know. Lauren, now thank you so much for having us here at the Botanical Gardens. All right, so you are newly appointed executive director, right? That's right. I'm following on the footsteps of Susie Tyler. Yeah. So I'm excited to be here. There's a lot going on at the garden, so it's a great time to step in and get all this direction going in the right way. Yeah. So tell us just a little bit about your role as executive director. I think a primary function as a director is fundraising for one. And I like to divide this role into two parts. There's front of the house and there's back of the house. So the front of the house is in the office. I'm dressed up today. I'm not out here in the garden, working in the garden, nor will I, I, I won't be found out here very much, except for on our volunteer days. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it's getting grants, it's getting the money in the bank, and it's executing uh, fundraising events and programs for education here in the garden for children and adults, and nurturing the uh, relationships we have with the people in our community who are garden enthusiasts. Yeah, you got a big job. <laughs> Keeps you pretty busy, right? It does. It's a lot of hats to wear. I guarantee you. Which I like. Diversity every day. It's something new every day when I come into work. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, obviously, you know, this show is Project Volunteer, talking about the volunteering. Uh, and we're so excited about doing all these different volunteer opportunities today. I bet you have a ton of volunteer opportunities. Tell us about those. We do have a ton of volunteer opportunities and you don't have to be a gardener. And anywhere you go to volunteer, you don't have to specialize in what that place offers as their service, like Habitat for Humanity. You don't have to be swinging a hammer to volunteer. So same thing here, you don't have to have your shovel and your gloves on to volunteer. We certainly need that and we rely on volunteerism a lot. But don't eliminate yourself as a volunteer or limit your opportunities to volunteer because you think you're not qualified. Right. There's always something you can do. I could have you answering the phones, greeting guests. I think that's a lot. A lot of people don't really think about those kind of things. You assume going to a botanical garden, you're going to be working in the garden. That's but right. You have a lot of stuff to do, right? That's right. And you know what? There's side effects to volunteering. There's short-term side effects and long-term side effects. The short terms are the gratification you receive in your heart, yeah. you know, that you volunteered to do a good thing. Yeah. The long term side effects could be that maybe you met somebody who might be your future boss yeah. because you never know who you're volunteering alongside of. Right. And then also what it does when you come back around and you see the garden, you can be proud. Oh, I weeded that area. Look how good it looks. Yeah. So there's a lot of great side effects to volunteering. I love it. Yeah. So tell us the different, besides behind the scenes, some answering the phones, some paperwork, what about out here in the actual garden? What are some things? And there again, it's different skill set levels. You can come out here and paint a fence. You can simply weed. We have our Monty, our volunteer, who trims our trees for us, and that's a big job that does require skill. But we can find anything that you would want. If you want to volunteer out here, I can find a place that you're comfortable volunteering in and that might be helping the garden stay beautiful and, or it might be behind the scenes putting some mailers in the mail yeah. for us. Yeah. So if you're interested, give you a call, give you an email. That's right. And on our website, yeah, we have a volunteer form on our website at WKBG.org. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. Thank you so much, man, for meeting us out here at the Botanical Gardens. I'm excited to learn a new volunteer opportunity they have here. Looks like we have a lot of mulch in the back of this truck. Sure. So I'm guessing we're going to do some mulching. Hey, I'm ready to get after it. The kids, right. kids and I uh, come out uh, every week, well, not every weekend, once a month. They have uh -huh. uh, first weekend wonders, yeah. uh, volunteers, and uh, they got a, you know, the neat thing about coming to the garden is uh, every month we come, something's different. Do you all love it? Yeah. What do you like the most about coming out here and volunteering? 
It's fun. It's, it's fun. fun. Yeah. It's fun. Get out in nature, hang out with Dad. Well, I like to talk to. Um, there's a girl that comes here, and I like to talk to. Her. So you make new friends, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Get out in nature, hang out with family, make new friends. Everything about volunteering mm -hmm. is good, right? I, like it. I tell you what. Now I'm new to all this, so why don't y'all train me? What we're we gonna do? Sure, we're just gonna. It's pretty simple. We're just gonna. There's as you can look around the garden. There's plenty of places to uh, keep the mulch. And, yeah. Uh, we, it uh, looks like there's some old mulch yeah. under there. Yeah. So we're just gonna replace we're just gonna, it. We're just gonna add to it. And okay. It helps keep the the weeds down. The the crews that help. Uh, help landscape and, and uh, cut the grass. They don't mm -hmm. have to get so close to the to the trees and bushes. <laughs> All right, y'all ready to spread it? Yeah. All right, All right. now what, what's the what's some tools we can take over there to spread? Like well, some like of these rakes? Shovel. Yeah, yeah, a we can take a rake, away. a shovel. Why don't you uh, take the little pitchfork? A lot of times, uh, a good pair of work gloves are all we need, especially right. with the mulch. We like to get on our hands and knees and just, just spread it. Well, All right. my old I body lets me. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go put some mulch down. All right, get in there and remember we want, we want to keep it. We want to keep it away from the base of a. Oh, I see. Uh, about I don't know, four or five inches out. Oh, okay. yeah, just so it can breathe. Just so it can breathe and keep yeah. growing. And oh, I see. Doesn't stun its growth. And I see. So I want to pull it. Sure, yeah. Out this way. Oh. One, it may, one, it makes it look a little more uh, curb appeal, but also uh, it just helps keep the, the grass from growing and right. uh, it'll, it'll help hold a little moisture too. And Well, good golly, that was fast. Mm -hmm. Well, That didn't take us long to get that one done. No, kids tell them what, the more hands that work, what? The faster time goes the, by. The fa well, and the faster work gets done, right? All right. Yeah, we could use another helper. All right, so we need Look, a little we bit need, more. We need some more, All yeah. Right. Here, I'll shovel this time. Perfect. The last time, uh, Daddy pitchfork. Yep, I'll, I'll get it. We almost had more volunteers than we had work. Well, Y'all had a lot they, of folks out here. That's we not did. A bad, no, bad no. Thing, well, and I think we got done about half hour early because yeah. everybody pitched in and yeah. But uh, they had a wedding later that day and we were wanting to spruce things up out here and sure, mm -hmm. sure enough, we we got her knocked out pretty quick. All right. All right, kids, you ready? All right, I think we can finish up this second get, one. Let's get this next one. You know, we uh, we uh, like to come also because it's just good to give back to the community. Uh, I've known the Tylers, Bill and Susie Tyler, that helped orchestrate the, the garden. I've known them since I was in high school, and uh, we have a great relationship with them, but it's a uh, over the years, I'd say, well, I'm not going to tell you how long ago I graduated high school, but <laughs> oh, you're you know, back then, the TV show. over in the Rose Garden, that's all that was here. Yeah, and uh, the it's been really day. neat over the past 20 something years to watch the garden grow. And, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. there's, yeah. Been a, there's been a lot of, a lot of uh, people in the community donate, donate things and their time, their, their sweat, no. uh, different buildings. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 a really it's almost a hidden gem here in Owensboro. Uh, I teach at Owensboro High School, mm -hmm. and we uh, for about 12 years we brought our senior class out every spring, and yeah, uh, 250, 300 kids, and yeah, we'd spend half a day and yeah. grill out for them, and yeah. a lot of people can get a lot of work done in a short period of time. I'm already sweating. That's great. I sweat in the winter time. You know eat? that. Jason, let me ask you one other question. <laughs> sure. Why do you think it's so important to bring your own kids? Maybe somebody watching out there that wants to volunteer as a family. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, one, I, you know, we're all busy in life between work and family and other responsibilities. But uh, it, it's just quality of time we get to spend. My wife likes it because she gets a, a morning to herself, either sleeping in or doing house stuff with the empty house. It's it's good to get out and roll up your sleeves and get dirty a little bit, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I tell you, one of my favorite things, Jason, is is going out and volunteering with my kids, with my family. That's something that I've that I've just learned. It is such a valuable lesson for kids. Sure. You know, it's so easy to, uh, you know, no offense, but sometimes kids get stuck. It's so easy to be on that iPod or, oh, or yeah. to watch TV or something, but to get them out in nature, no and doubt. get them volunteering, giving back to the community. Sure. Right. That's a good thing. Well, not only that, the community gives us so much in so many ways. So. 
it's just one little way that we can give back to what it's done for us, you know. So, so they, well, thanks for the training. Hey, it's and been thanks fun. Thanks for y'all's time, for your commitment and your volunteerism. Yeah. But well, let's go ahead and do a little bit let's, more. Let's do a little more. Here. We hope to have y'all back again. Thank you. Especially with us. <laughs> Miss Linda, thank you so much for meeting us here at the Botanical Gardens. Look at all these beautiful flowers it's we get beautiful to walk today. along with. Yes. Now tell us, uh, you are a volunteer here and you'd like to take a lot of your students from your school. Tell us about that out here to volunteer. Sure, right. I'm from Brush University mm -hmm. and we like to bring our students from the first year experience here when they arrive for orientation. So a big part of Brescia is helping our students reach successful lives through meaningful employment, but also through service to others. So it's really important to us that during orientation that they come out here um, and see what kind of resources are out in the community and what kind of people they'll be living alongside so they can get to know the area better. This is a good opportunity to explain to folks uh, there might be other schools out there. Maybe, maybe it's a university, maybe it's a high school, maybe it's just uh, uh, kids at an elementary school, but for school groups, I mean, uh, how would you inspire them to come out? What would you say to them to come out and volunteer in their community, a place like this or somewhere else? This is one of the best things that you can do for your mental health and your physical health is to get out there and help other people. I agree. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Let's keep walking along oh. and looking at some pretty uh, flowers. Yes. a good time here today. Absolutely! We did. We got in some weeds. We got our fingers dirty. I got to learn did how to hoe. Did you, <laughs> you get them pretty little fingernails dirty? Let me see. Uh, they were a little oh, dirty. Oh, they still look all right. <laughs> and I'm sweating. Now, it was an awesome time today, don't you think? We had a great time. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye. Get out and volunteer in your community today. If you have an idea for our show, a story of inspiration, or would like to nominate a volunteer hero, get in on the conversation on our Facebook page or go to projectvolunteer.org. This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering.